Hello guys, this is Nick from HF Survival School. Thank you very much for joining me. First of all, today it is a very windy day, so apologies if you hear some wind noises. So today I want to uh, share an awesome uh, super shelter concept with you, which is very portable, as portable as it can get. And if you look at me, could you tell that I have a shelter on me that can, in which I can survive in extreme cold temperatures? Of course not, but here, this small pouch which goes on your belt and it is as portable as it can get, has everything in it, what you need to build a shelter from, and not just a regular shelter, a shelter in which you can survive even in the most extreme cold temperatures, even if it is snow outside and all of that good stuff. So let's take a closer look what's in it. So the first and the most important uh, part of the shelter is this space blanket uh, which has that kind of reflective coating but uh, this is more high quality stuff it will last you longer and it won't rip as easy as one of those uh, cheap milers get so I'd recommend to uh, pay a little bit extra and get this higher quality. The second item is this roll of plastic bag, which is about 2 mil thick and is uh, 1.5 uh, meters wide and uh, 2 and a half or 3 meters uh, in length, I don't remember it correctly. So it is more than enough to cover a person up to like 2 meters. And the last part of the shelter, I came up with this very neat idea to use these uh, paper clips, which you can find anywhere. They cost almost nothing and weigh almost nothing. And they are the very quick and fast way to set up your shelter. Now in my pouch I decided to add a few more items because I had space. First of all, on the outside I added this paracord bracelet which has uh, waxed uh, jute wine in the middle, gives me a lot of cordage if I need it and it has a small ferro rod so it is a good add-on without adding any weight and I can wear it on my wrist if it bothers me on the hip. I have also added paracord in my kit because I think that cordage is a very uh, needed item in the outdoors and in a survival situation especially. And I would recommend all of you uh, to learn a lot of knots. Knots are very underrated but when you go outdoors you, uh, you will realize at one point or another that you will need to know a few knots and it makes life very easy. So first of all, of course, we need some kind of knife. I decided to add the stainless steel Victorinox knife, which is, has double blades, so you can use this bigger blade for utility purposes and this small for food or something like that. Or if one breaks, you will have a backup. Or if you want maybe a carbon steel knife, I would also recommend this Opinel number eight, which is high carbon steel. It is very sharp and has a 90 degree spine with which you can uh, strike a ferro rod. Then I added two ways to start a fire. First is this ferro rod, which is with its striker. I think this is from Ultimate Survival Technologies. It is a nice little ferro rod, doesn't take up space, and it comes with its own scraper, so you don't need to use your knife to uh, start a fire, and we'll, that is a really good add-on, I think. Second item is this uh, mm, waterproof match case in which I have some matches, some strikers. On the top it has a mirror 
and on the back it has a very small ferro rod. So having multi-purpose items in your kit is very important. And the last item which I added, uh, this was made by my friend, this is some paraffin wax uh, mixed with some uh, sawdust. It is an amazing fire starter. I will use this today to show you guys how effective fire starter paraffin with mixed sawdust is. Here is my tactical thermometer from my childhood. It was the only thermometer I could find at home. As you see, it is 5 degrees Celsius, plus 5. So let's put it inside the shelter and see how much it goes up. So guys, I hope you hear me well. Uh, but uh, here are a few advices I can give you. Uh, first of all, safety is number one priority. You have to understand that when making this kind of shelter, you are surrounded with plastic and this, if this plastic catches on fire, you won't have a good time at all. I learned this shelter concept from Morse Kohansky when I was reading his book uh, from his super shelter. So the reflecting coating is uh, reflecting all of the heat and uh, trapping it inside your shelter. When you're making this kind of shelter, the smaller, is it, the smaller it is, the better, because uh, there will be uh, less uh, air to warm up. This plastic bag in front of me uh, catches all of the heat, so it doesn't uh, let heat go out, and it uh, lets the heat come in from the fire. This kind of shelter is uh, meant to be uh, used in uh, extreme cold situations, in like minus 20 Celsius or such but it, uh, it can also be used uh, a bit warmer. Now, you of course need insulation from the ground because the ground is taking the most heat from you. For that, um, I prefer to make a, a spruce bough uh, bed. Now, the general rule is to uh, put this amount of, this thick amount of uh, spruce boughs on the ground and when you lay it down, it will uh, compress to about like this width and then you add uh, this more so that it will be about this thick and it will be uh, insulating you from the ground. Now, I didn't do that uh, here because I'm not in the mountains, I'm uh, in a small woodland next to my city, so I don't want to cut down a lot of spruce boughs just for one day and one video. But uh, if this video will get 200 likes, I will also uh, film part two when I will be going in the mountains. I will be staying in this shelter actually in the night and I will make a long fire and it will be a great survival adventure. I will uh, test my limits. I will test the shelter, but I know the shelter works because I'm already really hot and as I see the temperature uh, got up even though it is like uh, sitting here for like five minutes. Let's sit it for, let's uh, leave it here for like uh, 10 more minutes and then we check. You can set up this kind of shelter in many kind of ways. So if you guys would like that, I uh, comment down below and I can make other setups for this super shelter, other more complicated setups. But this is as simple as it gets. It took me like five minutes to set it up. But the only thing you need to find in the woods is this long stick and the rest you have. These paper clips are helping a lot and saving a lot of time. So if you are in an emergency, if it's dark and you don't want to mess with these knots, you can uh, set it up like that very easily. So it has been like 15 minutes as the little guy is inside. Let's check it out. How much is it? I need to focus. 
as you see it is 23 or 24 degrees Celsius so that is like 18 degrees warmer than what is outside and now that it got dark it got even cold so as you see this shelter works very good even though I have this very small fire going and can you imagine what will happen when I make it with a long fire so guys I hope you enjoyed my super shelter concept if you liked it please give it a thumbs up subscribe to my youtube channel and click that bell icon next to it to get notified for more awesome videos now I'll wait for the fire to go down and when it is completely out I will be heading home. I have a very, very long hike home and I have to hike back, hike back home in the dark. So these days most of the things you hear on the internet are from guys that don't go outdoors and they just sit at home and one guy tells other guy, he just tells the third guy and the third guy will come and teach you how to do stuff even though he has not tried at all, every, anything at all. I would recommend trying this shelter at first, maybe in your backyard or maybe somewhere close uh, next to your house and actually try it and you will see that it works great uh, then uh, you can go in the outdoors um, not very far and not very deep in the woods and stay there also and then maybe you can go out even more further the most important tip in survival in bushcraft and generally in the outdoors is experience because I, I, I know I'm talking like some kind of pro, but I'm also a beginner, but uh, I know it is true and I have seen it from uh, my uh, experience that experience is everything in the outdoors and uh, even though um, I had many cases when uh, with uh, elders when I was in the outdoors or with even with my father when I go hunting or when I'm in the outdoors uh, I may be teaching him stuff which I read in the books and it looks awesome and it uh, feels that it is only the right way to do it but he has his own way of doing it and he is doing it uh, better than uh, if I would because he has experience and that's uh, the thing that is the most important and that is the thing that is the most uh, and that is the best survival kit that you can possibly have knowledge and experience so thank you very much for watching and see you guys in the next one